we're down in the ultralight area because we want to talk about ultralights today. Now we're standing in front of one that has two seats in it, so that's not an ultralight, but it's the CGS Hawk. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm going to talk with Bob Santum and his son LB who are representing not quite this product, but one very much like it. So the airplane we're standing in front of is a two-seater, but that's not what you're planning to do with your son here. What are you planning to do, Bob? Well, there's a little bit of history here, Dad. Okay, it's, uh, give me some history. Yeah, Terry Short, who is an absolute genius when it comes to this stuff, uh, purchased the company from the second owner of the company. And because the Hawk is, has been so popular, has such a storied history, he was really busy really quickly. Uh, so in dealing with Terry back and forth, he basically said to me one day, he said, Bob, why don't you and your son take over the manufacturing rights for the single seat Hawk and the Ultra. And uh, we talked about that for some time, came to an agreement. We own the manufacturing rights to the single and the Ultra. You're gonna do all the single seaters. That is correct. Not all of which are actually Part 103 Ultralight, correct? That's correct. correct. We have the Aero 1, which is a certified airplane, and we do have the... Okay, so that'll be an experimental amateur built in, that the is way correct. you're going to do it. That okay. is correct. And uh, then you're going to do the Part 103 as well, though? We are, and we have one mocked up here with uh, with a nice Hearth F-33 engine on it that uh, will be our... Uh, will be our kind of flagship brand new engine for for that to make the 254 pound limit and we're very excited about being part of the Hawk family. Cool now one some people might wonder and so we'll help identify that for them why he would make that deal with you it's because you have some history with this particular single C CGS Hawk not this particular one but those kinds of aircraft, right? Right. I've owned I've owned CGS Hawks in the past, and uh, I had gone to Terry to uh, to work out some new parts that I needed for a, a, actually a two place and a single place, and we just developed a great relationship. Uh, we're, we're still in the process of getting the jigs to the point that we both have a set that kind of a thing. I so. see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of the parts on a you know I'm, I'm looking over your shoulder here is where my eyes are going because that's a bare bones. The one you talked about that you've mocked up and brought here, right? And I look at that and I go, well, it's all, almost this two-seater here. You know, at least a lot of parts of it are. That's correct. Is that correct? That's okay. Correct. There are some similarities to parts and, and redundancies, so that we get to take advantage of some economies of scale in that. So, so he could buy a whole bunch of I don't know flap handles or something like that, or fabricate those. Correct. And you could say, yeah, that that'll work for us. Right. This part down here, however, some part. Uh, has to be different. You'll have to do that yourself. Is exactly. that correct? Exactly. Okay, yeah. cool. Where are you physically doing this? You say well, you're 90 miles south, but you've got a manufacturing plant, or what's the story? Well, actually, we, we're spending most of our time in Lake Wales, but we, we basically just uh, had a new building built next to our hangar. We live in an airport community. Oh, ah, okay. And there will be some components that are done there. Uh, but the major part is, is done in Lake Wales at this particular point in time. That may change in the future, but that's the way we're doing it right now. Well, certainly with Part 103, you don't need anybody's permission to do that. It's, no. We've always loved, and I still love Part 103 after now 36 years of that rule being in place, front and back of one single piece of paper is all the regulation that's spelled out, and it has no words at all about how you manufacture. You can do it any old way you want. Exactly. And so that means, of course, you'll do that carefully, we know that, but uh, that means you can just build those things, and the larger ones that don't quite make the weight, they're just a kit, so you can do that too. Exactly, exactly. And we've, we've really tried to stay true to, to Chuck's original design, and uh, it has such a storied history that, that we really wanted to stick to that. And obviously there's innovations in engines, instrumentation, brakes, and things of that nature. Uh, but the design of that airplane has been so awesome over the years, we really want to preserve that and treasure that. Because um, as you know, the, he won grand champion in 1982 at Sun and Fun right. with the first Hawk. And uh, that, that's a great story to tell. Right out of the gates with that one. And yeah. that one, that one that he won that award on and which subsequently myself and a number of other people flew, was the one you're now building. There was not a two-seater in those correct. days. That is correct. So it's that's good after correct. all those years, 1982, the same year the Part 103 rule came out, and now it's got new manufacturing uh, energy behind it. That's yeah. great to hear about. Yeah. What really surprised us, but we shouldn't have been surprised, is in the three air shows that we've attended this year, we've kept mental track of the people that we've talked to that kind of walk up. Okay. And uh, we've talked to more than 300 people to, that we posed this question. We've said, have you ever heard of the Hawk before when they walk up and they're looking around? And we've only had 11 so far out of that whole group of people that had not. Who had so did not that, know about it. So the it. history okay. is really, really strong. We're very proud of that.
Well, that's real solid. Now, I have to ask you, when you were posing these questions, undoubtedly they were standing in front of a two-place or they looked at a two-place or something. Did they know they were talking to you relative to the single place? Yes. Okay, so you yes. spelled that out when you asked the question. Absolutely. And you still found that level of interest? Yes. Very okay. much so. What do you think is going to be the situation based on these conversations you had and how many can you build or what, what level of interest did you find in all of that? I how about buying that is? Yeah, I think we're going to be busy. We'll, we'll support parts on, on the, the hundreds of them that are already out there. Um, but we think that we're going to have interest in not only kits, hey, we'll deliver the, you the kit, you go build it. Uh, but we think that there will also be some interest in coming in and spending some time in our shops in Lake Wales or, or Port St. Lucie uh, to use our tools, gain some ex experience. You'll do some builder assist there for the kit version, yeah. which, which means anybody that puts a few more goodies on it, we know that it's pretty tough to stay within that 254. It's definitely possible, but it it's is. a challenge. It is. And somebody says, well, i got to have this, that, and the other thing on it. Yeah. Boom, they're over that line. Exactly. Then they got to go kit. And now you got somebody's hand to hold a little bit. You yeah. ready for that part? I think so. I think so. We're we're uh, we're people persons, and uh, we enjoy talking with the people and, and interacting and sharing some of the knowledge. And uh, and then the other part that we'll do is we'll build an airplane for them. And they can just fly it away. Sure. Yeah. Well, part 103, you can definitely do that. I'll just make a guess here in advance that most of them, if they're part 103, you'll build for them. I, I think you're right. I Usually think you're right. We'll probably end up deliver them to, to them because we have a trailer that we can deliver ah, things beautiful. to. So. Okay, yeah, because flying one all the way across the country takes a little while. Yeah. Can't be done. Yeah. Can't be done. Get a lot of stick time. Takes a little while. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, <laughs> exactly. really. But if you got time, by all means do it. Absolutely. So uh, you're going to train people how to build them. You're going to bring them there and say, yeah, you can come here and do a lot of the work and mm -hmm. then take the rest home. And now you got the yeah. basic rhythm. Is that how it's going to go? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of different broad-based appeal for you know some people want to build some people want to fly some people aren't sure they want to build so that little bit of builders assist or a lot of builders assist kind of fits their bill now let me ask you you said you have experience with these you've flown the 103 and uh, the single seat variants uh, give me a few descriptions and either one of you can talk about this about what you think about how it flies tell me a little bit about how it flies it's been a while for a lot of people they haven't seen us Part 103 Hawk for a while, perhaps. Yeah, they, they fly really well as they always did. And that's been the appeal. I mean, when you talk to people that, that, that come up and just start a conversation, it's, boy, the Hawk just really flies so well. And I think that's a quote from a lot of the articles that I've, I've heard you author yourself, just that the Hawk flies really great. I've always found it to do so, but it's been a number of years since I've had my hands on a stick for the Part 103 Hawk. Well, we're going to probably probably get you into one of those maybe the I next so. upcoming air shows next year. So. I hope so. That'd be a great pleasure. We'll do a video pilot report or something like go. that. But more about the entire Hawk line, which I've had the pleasure to fly over the years. I think every single model, Chuck Sluzarczyk. I uh, love that guy, uh, built a lot of interesting airplanes and I think I flew them all. You can find more about that on bydanjohnson.com.